Hey, don't know how you found me, but it's me, Van, and welcome to part two of Without a Voice. In the last one, we learned a lot of things. We learned that Cassidy is an exiled princess, and that she's staying in a cottage, and given all that she needs to survive by her brother. She has a strong attachment to her brother because she doesn't really get to interact with anyone else. She has to stay hidden away. That is, until she meets Elowen, who is another lovely lady who happens to live in the forest as well, and their relationship has been a little rocky, but I guess we'll see how that turns out. Reminder that content warnings are in the description. So without further ado, let's continue. After a long, fruitless walk about the forest, she arrived in front of the wisteria tree. Elowen. Princess. I am no longer a princess. Just because you no longer live in a castle does not mean that you are no longer a princess. Cassidy was reminded of the word marriage once again. Elowen was right. She was still considered a princess. And so far as a princess could be useful. A long silence passed between them. Both were conscious, no doubt, of the argument that had transpired between them. An argument they had not yet resolved. I am sorry. Elowen's eyes widened almost imperceptibly. But Cassidy, staring into the other woman's face as she was, took note. I should not have burdened you with my circumstances to begin with. But you were only worried for me. I should have been more sensitive in my explanation. I don't know. I don't think it was the explanation itself. Yeah, there we go. No. Huh? Cassidy was struck by the sight of Elwyn's soft smile as she laughed. The former princess's heart fluttered and her brother's letter was probably forgotten. It is nothing. It would seem that I, too, am quite the fool. The air thusly cleared and the two women were able to enjoy the rest of their day together. They whiled the time away in companionable satisfaction. Okay. That night, Cassidy drifted off to sleep with a full heart. Okay, things are looking up. The strings of love are oft unseen, though wrapped around you they may be. When tied fast, none can come between, nor challenge humble fate's decree. Ooh, day five. Ah, how beautiful it is today. Indeed. Elwyn had surprised Cassidy early that morning, arriving at her front door without warning. So, Elowen didn't even knock, silly creature. I wonder if she would have left if I hadn't seen her and opened the door. The thought bothered her, almost as much as the notion that Elwyn might not yearn for Cassidy's company the way Cassidy did for hers. After some time spent lingering, both paralyzed by indecision, they decided to go on a leisurely nature walk. Of course. For the next few hours, they strolled through the forest together, stopping here and there to pick berries or mushrooms. That one is poisonous. Do not touch it. R right Cassidy drew her hand back in mortified alarm. It would not do for your lovely skin to be marred by poisonous spores. Cassidy hazarded a glance at the other woman's face, but Elowen looked as unflappable as ever. Poisonous. I... Okay. I was gonna click that choice anyway, but I, I didn't mean to click that so quickly. You know so much about the flora and fauna here. How ever did you learn it all? I have lived here many years. In that time, I've witnessed many interesting things. I have learned much, letting the people who pass through educate me. However... Huh? It's been a solitary life. I have seen much, but experienced so little. Elowen. I have long felt like someone on the outside looking in on a world I could never touch. There was a melancholy in Elowen's countenance that Cassidy had not yet seen, nor even thought that the woman was capable of. The Elowen she knew was dignified, taking such charge of her emotions that none ever showed. I have not known her long, of course. 
Perhaps that was merely how she comports herself around those of little acquaintance. What made you decide to reach out to me? Reach out? That is... She thought back to their first meeting, the way her own heart had leapt at the sight of Elowen. And Elowen had known all about her, had apparently been watching her for some time. You didn't have to be sitting under the tree that day. You could have just continued watching me from afar. But you found me. You spoke to me. And I'm so glad she did. But I fear she might call me silly if I say such a thing. I thought you delicately beautiful. The matter-of-a-fact way that Elwyn said this struck Cassidy. She was flattered, of course. Yet part of her was also worried. Beauty was not something lasting. It would be a shaky foundation for any relationship. If it had been a courtier complimenting her beauty, Cassidy might have taken it better. But this was Elowen, a woman of whom she was becoming increasingly fond. Thought? Thought's past tense, is it not? What do you think of me now? I still think you exceedingly beautiful, but dainty and delicate you are not. You are far from being the poised princess I took you for. Cassidy winced and her mouth formed a little pout as she turned her eyes to the ground. As I thought. It is to be expected. Someone so graceful as Elowen, of course, would find me lacking. You are not what I expected, but I believe that might be for the better. Slowly, Cassidy tilted her face up, her eyes growing large with disbelief. For the better. You are always exceeding my expectations. I wonder if the other people I allowed to come and go would have, as well, had I let them so near. Well... Huh? It may be selfish of me, but I... I am truly happy you let the others go. I'm glad that I'm the only person you allowed close. I'm sorry, that makes me sound so... so ugly. No. No uglier than I. Suddenly, in Cassidy's eyes, Elwyn looked so very haggard. She peered through the polished veneer and saw a woman who was tired and hungry. Are you alright? In a blink, Elowen appeared to be the same as always. I am fine. Even so, Cassidy could not shake the feeling that something was off. Was her hair like... It looked like wisteria. Is she part of the tree somehow? Are you quite sure? You seem tired. Elowen was silent for a long while. Yes. Perhaps... Perhaps I am tired. Forgive me, I am not used to the midday sun. It occurred to Cassidy then that she had never seen Elowen in the morning before. Could she be something of a night owl? I hadn't supposed it. And here I invited her to walk with me, underneath the full blaze of the sun. How thoughtless I am. Elowen. Yes? Why don't you stay with me at my cottage tonight? What? Well, I am worried about you, and it can't be easy being a woman and living alone. She knew this best of all. I would be much more at ease if you would come with me tonight. Let us break bread together and while away the night in comfort. She was not expecting Elwyn to accept, not Elwyn, who had reacted so strongly to an invitation merely a few days earlier. And yet... All right. Really? Would it be better if I returned to my home? N no I was just worried that you would not accept. I realize that it's not very dainty to be so forward. At this, Elwyn finally smiled. Cassidy's heart felt akin to an acrobat at the sight, doing backflips and pirouettes in joy. It would be my honor to accompany you. It may do us both some good. As ever, Cassidy was far too excited to hear the latter. Looking forward to a night with her new favorite person, she had already changed course and started along the path home.
Cassidy closed the front door behind them and went to the kitchen to put away the plants they'd gathered. Is there anything I can help with? Leave it to me. Just have a seat and rest. You really do look tired. All right. While she put her affairs in order in the kitchen, Cassidy couldn't help but think back to the things Elwood had said. She said that she likes me the way I am. That's so kind. She felt a deep sense of warmth and satisfaction, the likes of which she had not felt in a long time. Cassidy returned to the living room a short while later, two cups of tea in hand. Oh! She found Elowen asleep, slumped on the divan. Poor thing. She must have been exhausted. There was a loose strand of hair in front of Elowen's face. Cassidy reached out and tucked behind her ear. She looks so innocent when she's asleep. Chuckling to herself, Cassidy let Elowen rest and pass some quiet time reading by the other woman's side. Night soon fell, and the pair supped together. She still isn't eating anything. She had plenty of tea earlier, but... Could it be that she's foreign? Perhaps she's too polite to say that it's not to her taste. I think she's a tree. Cassidy, look at me. I think she's a tree. <laughs> Elowen, unaware of being observed so directly, delicately sipped a glass of water. Are you fool? I am satisfied. How can you be when you didn't eat anything? I simply am not hungry at this very moment. I see. Her tone left no room for argument. After dinner, Cassidy cleared the plates and things away and began to get the room ready for sleep. The cottage was not large. Her parlor had to double as her bedroom out of necessity. It was all well and good for a single person, but now that another had been added, Cassidy became acutely aware of the lack of space. There's only one bed. I do not mind sleeping on the divan. I already did earlier. Once again, I am sorry that I didn't wake you up. You just looked so at peace. I could not bear to wake you. I'm embarrassed to have allowed you to see me in such a state. I only fear... Huh? No, it is nothing. I will gladly sleep on the divan or the ground. I am not choosy. Oh, that won't do at all. You're a guest. Oh, <laughs> Cassidy gulped. Truth be told, she had one other, much more preferable arrangement in mind. Oh, yes. They both sleep on the floor. Or that, of course. We we could share the bed. There's room enough for two. I notice you do not offer to sleep on the divan. Ah. Uh. Struck by her own lack of graciousness, Cassidy bit her lip, cowed into silence. I am only teasing. If you do not mind being so snug, I will be happy to share the space with you. Nothing would please me more than to be close to you. I mean, yes, wonderful. I shall fetch another pillow, then. She flew out of the room to retrieve a spare pillow from the closet, face burning with embarrassment. Yo, are they cuddling? Okay. Do you have enough space? You're not too cramped? I am fine. Truth be told, I do not mind the proximity. Okay. <laughs> I see you, Cassidy. She really made this fanfic moment happen, and good for her. Good for her. There was a faraway look in Elowen's eyes. I'd been alone for so long, until you came. How did you come to live here in the forest? Where is your family? Oh. I feel like normally, uh, I would usually pick this sort of option. But I do kind of want to be a little bit forward. It's a simple question, is it not? Why does she have such trouble talking about it? Though I suppose my own situation was not so simple to speak of. 
Has your family gone away? Elowen, with her mouth in a grim straight line, stared at Cassidy. It is a trying subject. I'm not quite sure where to begin. She took a deep breath. I have lived here all my life. Once, I was not alone, but... Elowen paused and sighed. You remember the wisteria tree? Of course, that's my favorite place in this entire forest. Have you noticed that there are no other wisteria trees around it? Now that you mention it... She never had thought about it. But as Cassidy searched her memory, she realized that Elowen was correct. You're right. I wonder why that is. There is an even older wisteria tree deep in the forest. But now those are the only two left, and they are so far from each other. So it is with me. Cassidy found her choice of words puzzling, but nodded. I once had siblings. They have long since departed, so I don't really have family here anymore. Others have come and gone, as I said, but I could not relate to them. I watched them from afar without entering their lives and did not mourn them when they left mine. And so the years went by. You'll never be alone again. Elowen's eyes widened. Cassidy thought she might start crying, but she only smiled sadly. I see. Cassidy snuggled just a little bit closer to the other woman, as if to show meaning through actions where words might fall, fail. Wow, I cannot read! And so they passed the night together, in pleasant company and a warm conversation. I'm scared. When the sunshine blazes down, I soon begin to wish for rain. But when you've gone away, my dear, I soon long for the sun again. Oh boy, Cassidy awoke alone with a cold space beside her. I hope she's alright. I will have to be careful with the rest of my supplies. The next, the next shipment is a while away yet. I cannot feast with Elowen too often. That being said, it is not as if she really eats when she's with me. Still, what a wonderful night that was. Each precious memory had been carved into Cassidy's heart. She yawned and slowly pulled herself out of bed. With or without Elowen, she would have to get on with her day. Uh -huh. Cassidy hummed a little tune to herself as she cleaned up and prepared breakfast. Sitting down at the table with her bread and morning tea, she glanced at her stationery set, left by the vase. A lot has happened. Perhaps I should write Alexander a letter. Ooh, I'm gonna say, but I, it's gonna be a hard no for me. But who knows, I might regret this. I'm gonna say no, though. She shook her head. That can wait. I'm more worried about what Elowen is up to now. Though she should be accustomed to such solitude, she could barely concentrate on her usual chores. To think that a few days could change a person so. In a lull in her activities, Cassidy's gaze went to the window. Deep in the forest, her beloved wisteria tree stood. She could see it so clearly in her mind's eye. <laughs> Elowen is like that tree. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Elowen is very much like that tree. She said as much herself. So beautiful and haunting. And alone. The other woman's words from the night before weighed heavily on Cassidy. She passed the rest of the day peacefully, but with a sense of unease. The next day came, and still no Elowen. Cassidy was left with nothing but her own thoughts. And thinking of Elowen perturbed Cassidy greatly. 
In the last several days, the woman had embedded herself into Cassidy's life like a thorn. I'd never expected to become close to another person again. She thought about Elowen and the things the other woman had said. The hours spent together that were so few but felt like an impossible eternity. I never did ask her about her feet. Why are her toes always curled? Despite how she looks, she must be much older than me. She has a proper way of speaking and always says she's lived in the forest a long time. And with the intricacy of her clothing and her manners. Something did not quite add up. Elwyn did not seem to like people much. Certainly it did not seem her presence in the wood, despite how long it had been, was known to many. Alexander most probably would not have sent me here if it was known that a beautiful woman was living alone in this very wood. Where did Elwyn come from? Why was she alone? She still had no satisfactory answer. And oddest of all. I still have never seen her eat. Thinking it all over. I'm gonna go with this. Cassidy suddenly realized that all of the things she knew about Elowen pointed to something potentially horrible. She'd been so overcome by the woman's peculiar charm and beautiful looks that she had overlooked something. Cassidy shook her head. Perhaps she was jumping to conclusions too quickly. I must be a little lonely, that's all. I haven't seen her since that night. She's capable of joking, though she does not do it often. Her smile is so precious. She can be blunt, perhaps, but I believe she means well. I... I care deeply for her, and she... Remembering the last several days... Not Elowen is truly monstrous. I know this is going to be a diverting path, so we'll do another save. Presently, there was a knock at the door, startling Cassidy out of her deep thoughts. It was a short knock, a signal for a letter not accom accompanying a box. A letter? So soon after the last? How wonderful to hear from him again so soon. If I leave here, if one day Alexander allows me to leave, what else awaits me? Is a political marriage truly my only means of escape? If I can be useful to the kingdom in any way, is that better? Will my life no longer be considered a waste? Alexander. Um, I think for the sake of how the story has developed, I think it would make sense that she's doubtful now. Like, for her character. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But it would make sense that she's kind of doubting everything now. Did you truly ever love me? Alexander, did you truly ever love me? Is the precious younger brother that I once knew completely gone? Are you truly the one who has been writing me these letters? One negative thought spiraled into a dozen. She let out a long sigh. Her thoughts had taken her on a not-so-merry chase. If I dwell on these thoughts, there will be no end to them. She brewed herself a cup of tea to calm her nerves and began reading her new book. From time to time, her eyes went, somewhat nervously, to the window. And so, evening fell. Cassidy was sitting on the divan, enjoying a warm cup of tea as she read the latest book her brother had sent her. It was a darker tale than she was accustomed to, the tale of a tragic young mermaid. It seemed to be a fairy tale from a faraway land. Certainly, Veromir had simpler, happier stories. Or perhaps those were the only ones she had been allowed to learn. Goodness, every step she takes feels like walking upon knives. How dreadful! How could this author be so terribly cruel? Huh. Perhaps that is what ails Elowen. No. That would be ridiculous. Hmm. Suddenly the front doors of the cottage swung open without knock or warning. Cassidy dropped her book in alarm. Oh shit. There was something dreadful standing in the doorway. A monster! 
Cassidy muttered this under her breath, overcome by fear and awe. I don't know, I think she looks kind of... She looks kind of... Never mind, never mind. It is not safe here. Yet, no matter the appearance, Cassidy would never mistake that voice. Melodious, she had found it not long ago. Beautiful, she had thought its bearer until this very moment. She would be hard-pressed to describe Elowen as beautiful now. Really? Damn. Big fan. What did you say? There is a large army approaching from the east. They... They wear your colors. Alexander! Cassidy could not help but gasp. The monster nodded. I am afraid so. You must away with me. Cassidy bit her lip. Alexander would not harm me. If anything, they must be here to protect me. From this monster? Yes. Yes, of course. Quickly grasping the situation, the experts has calmed herself and tapped into her many years of diplomacy lessons. I will come right away. Then... Would you mind waiting for me outside? I will gather my things quickly. Yes. I won't be but a moment. Of course. The monster turned and left through the still open door, its movement slow and measured as always. Uh, as soon as Elowen was outside, Cassidy flew forward and slammed the door shut. Cassidy. Damn. Whoa, did I get a bad ending? Oh, jeez. Ignoring Elowen's sad, feeble voice, Cassidy locked and bolted the door. For good measure, she dragged the divan in front of it. Wow. The door shook as Elowen tried to enter, but would not give away. Why? How could I possibly heed the words of a monster? Who knows what you will do to me once you have me outside? She must be a demon, here to corrupt me. It's just as Alexandra said to the barons. I allowed your beauty, your charm to corrupt me. I have sinned, but I will sin no longer. Why? Be gone, monster. Dark in my doorstep no more. Elwin said nothing in reply. But then, wordlessly, the monster ambled towards the windows. Oh no, I didn't think about blocking those. But the monster made no move to enter forcefully. It just stood there with the same blank look on its face. In some ways, Cassidy felt that was worse. And the night passed just like that, with Cassidy pressed against the door in fear and Elwin standing in place still as a tree. Watching. Eventually, after what felt like a lifetime, the sun rose. What is even happening anymore? It's finally morning. If the army truly is coming, I wish they'd get here sooner. The day breaks. <gasps> Cassidy looked to the window in alarm. Could it be that Elwin hadn't slept either? Elwin stood there, looking even more haggard than she had the night before. The monster's gaze was unfocused. It seemed not to be looking at Cassidy, but rather through her. I have failed. I could not understand the most important thing. I could not convey my love without a voice. And so this wisteria must wither in harsh light of the seventh day past. Before Cassidy's eyes, Elowen crumbled into wilted wisteria petals and dust. The monster, the woman, was no more. Deep in the wood, a wisteria tree once adored by a maiden withered and died away as well.
damn. When bargain is struck, its terms must be met. Else take on your fate, and more suffering beget. Ash to ash, end. Well, that wasn't a good ending, was it? Oh, damn. I like that it gives you the little color for the one you already clicked. Okay, well, let's do I wonder if she's there. I wonder if she's there now, somewhere in that forest. Okay, this is the same again. Okay, we'll do strange. She is rather strange. Then again, there's nothing normal about my situation either. This only means I have more things to discover about her in the future. Even if Elowen was a tad strange, Cassidy knew that there was more to her than that. Wasn't there. Okay, this is again the same. Oh! This wasn't here before. So, we'll do this. Elowen is kind. Presently, there was a knock at the door. Okay. Oh, wait. That was different. Hold up. A letter. So soon after the last. I did send him a letter yesterday, but it's not possible for him to have read it and replied already. Right? Okay. How wonder So here she's actually... She had that passing thought. Interesting. Interesting. Because this is all the same other than that. This is new, too. How long must I stay here in the forest? Will I forever be here, atoning for my mistakes? Okay. If I dwell on these thoughts, there will be no end to them. Okay, I have a feeling this is gonna go a little better. I haven't seen Elwyn in nearly two days. Such a short time, but it weighs heavily on me. She looked out the windows of the forest. Perhaps Elowen was somewhere out there. Just as Cassidy was about to act on impulse and seek the other woman out, at last, the front door to the cottage slammed open. I apologize if I've caused you alarm, but I have urgent news. The vague notions that Cassidy had been supposing about Elowen's true nature paled in comparison to the real thing. Here was neither a monster or a demon, of that Cassidy was certain. Yet, despite the fact that such a realization could ins should inspire nothing but fear and disgust, Cassidy felt neither. Oh, thank God. For, more importantly, the woman standing before her now was undoubtedly Elowen. What news have you? Her voice did not quiver. There is a large army approaching. I believe that they have made camp for the night near here. And I fear they mean you harm. An army? What colors were their banners? Red and gold. So they must be from Veromir. Do not worry, my people would never hurt me. But Elowen shook her head. I overheard them talking. They certainly mean to do something terrible. Elowen looked sincere. She was truly worried. But even so, could it truly be? What reason would the army have to be here? I know that you are loath to trust in a monster such as I. No. No. I'm sorry, that isn't it. And there we have it. Would a true monster ever refer to themselves as one? Cassidy decided in her heart then and there that Elwyn was to be trusted. Even so, there was a contradiction here that bothered her. I believe you. Truly? Even though I look like this? Yes, I trust you. Even so. However, the situation bothers me. I believe you, but... I can't believe that the army of my own kingdom would wish me ill. For well, if they are here, it must surely be because my brother the king sent them. 
and for Alexander to betray me, I simply could not believe it. In her heart, he was always her beloved brother. Your brother is the one who put you here, do not forget. How could she have forgotten such an important fact? Cassidy hardly knew. No, I didn't forget. I simply grew accustomed to this life. You said that they are camped nearby. Yes. Can you take me to them? Elwyn nodded grimly. I understand. Perhaps that will allow you to come to terms with everything. Even so, I do not relish the pain that doing so will inflict upon you. I am ready. Cassidy said, clenching her fists. I'm a little worried about what this, this ending's gonna be. The two women made their way through the forest. Not long ago, they wandered here together. Those had been such carefree days, feeling far more distant in the past than they had the right to. Once this matter is dealt with, we will have those innocent days once more. Declaring so in her heart, Cassidy followed closely behind Elowen. Oh boy. Soon they reached the camp. Cassidy and Elowen hid behind trees and bushes as they approached, careful not to make their presence known. There were at least two dozen soldiers camped there. Is this really such a good idea? It doesn't matter if it's a good idea. Orders are orders. But still, the soldiers were talking amongst themselves when a tall figure emerged from a tent. What? Oh, I see. Cassidy would recognize the person anywhere. In her shock and anger, she gripped Elwyn's arm tightly. Elwyn turned to look at her. Your brother? She mouthed the words. Cassidy nodded. I understand that it may not seem chivalric to some of you. Worry not. I shall be the one to dispatch my sister. It is my duty. And make no mistake, this is for the good of the kingdom. It will silence the opposition amongst the barons and eliminate our kingdom's one exploitable witness. It may be difficult, but it is the right thing to do. Alexander spoke the words in a calm, cool tone. Dispatch. Eliminate. They were such harsh words that they stuck in Cassidy's mind. So Alexander came himself, and not to visit, not for my benefit, not even to help me, he came to. Cassidy was overcome by a feeling she had never before felt in her life. Rage. It was an indignant rage, an all-consuming, angry sort of despair. Once she had loved him. This was her twin brother, one whom she'd entered the world with. She would have given him anything. Except her life. Uh. As Cassidy gripped tighter onto Elowen's arm, the other woman began to change. Her appearance softened, became more and more human. Whatever essence was tainting her seemed to be draining away. And instead, that same essence... So, this was also an option. Elwyn muttered to herself so softly that the exiled princess did not hear. Then she spoke louder. Cassidy. Yes. Shall I help you wreak your vengeance? Can you? Yes, but you must stay with me, damned as we may become. I would gladly walk through the flames of hell at your side, revenge or no. It was all Elowen needed to hear, a declaration of love in its own right. She allowed her essence to flow freely now into Cassidy. The pair together began to change form, growing more monstrous, more powerful. The soldiers did not stand a chance against their combined might. Do you wish to kill him yourself, dear heart? It is, perhaps, your duty. On either side of them lie mounds of corpses, but in front lay the greatest prize, King Alexander himself. No, it's all right, Elowen. 
Alexander in his terror could not utter a single sound. I am better than him. Go. Never come here again. As of today, you no longer have a sister, and I no longer have a brother. So true. And so the king returned, broken and stumbling to his kingdom. He would never forget, though none believed him. Even on his deathbed, he continued babbling of beautiful demons. As for Cassidy and Ellenwood. Oh my god. Everyone, we won. I was so worried that they were going to die together just then, but look at us. Look at how beautiful they are. Oh my god. Cassidy is a demon? Ugh. Stunning. Goodness, I have no idea how your hair gets so tangled. It is the wind, my love. Is that so? We shall have to teach it a lesson. Demons though we may be, I do not believe we can do anything with the wind. Not with that attitude, dear one. Decades passed, yet the two of them remained unchanged. It was a freedom, a power that Cassidy had never known. Every day there was more to discover, more delights to find. Most of all, the pair enjoyed learning more about each other. Cassidy. Huh? What is it? Do you... I love you. How did you know I was asking that? Perhaps I was about to ask what you wish to do tomorrow. You most certainly were not. It's alright. I'll tell you as many times as you'd like. Elwyn settled into peaceful happiness, leaning against her beloved. She was utterly secure of Cassidy's feelings, but never tired of hearing about them. And even now, without a doubt, those two are still there. Living happily ever after. That's right. Bring it in, everyone. We've won. Oh my god, another art thing. Ugh, stunning. Never done before. I'm so sorry this has been in the way. United in love. Sharing their hate. These demons live on. Laughing at fate. Together, we are eternal. Yeah! Yeah, let's go! I don't even want another ending. I mean, I'm sure there could be so much more to discover, but I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm happy with this. Look at this. Ugh. Ugh, I love that. I love that so much. I didn't really process the bad ending. I, I feel like whenever I play... Excuse me. I've been super congested, as you guys know. I, Wow, it's just a struggle. Anyway, I... As soon as I get a bad ending, if I know I can just go back and try to find a different ending, I don't even sit to process the bad ending because... I refute it. If I had let myself sit with that first initial ending I got, that would have been devastating. I didn't really appreciate how Cassidy suddenly turned on Elowin and believed she was a monster, because at least I felt that that's not how I was playing her. But you know, I went and fixed it, and they're girl bosses together. <laughs> they should have killed her brother. They should have. And I will say, I really like this portrayal of their eternal love. I know it's cheesy, but it is a little sad to see when immortal characters are portrayed as losing that that zest of life, you know, that 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 excitement to learn and see new things. And it was just really nice to see that they're they're happy and content. They live forever. They're fine. They're happy to be together forever and learn more things and do more things. I think that's beautiful. Good for them. Good for them. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Now, if I were to assume anything about the other endings, I couldn't really tell you. But what I did glean from the, the bad ending I got is that Eloin seems to be under some sort of curse. And I guess she was bound to wither away if the one she loved didn't really understand that or couldn't figure that out without her saying it. Hence the title without a voice. That's what I get. Should I play the other endings? Yes, but I'm also like super, super tired. If you want to play this game, the games I play are always linked in the description. So go ahead and check that out. But yeah, this was without a voice. Thank you so much if you made it to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.